Good morning and happy Thanksgiving Sunday. We are going to be celebrating our Thanksgiving service this morning here on our YouTube channel. And I want to welcome you to our service. We will also be celebrating a spiritual communion, which I'll be talking about later in the service. So I just invite you as we go into the service that you have an open heart and an open mind, be willing to really go deeper into who you really are and how this time of Thanksgiving can truly bring out a higher understanding Understanding of really the blessings and the desires and the greatness that reside in your soul right here and right now and how we can truly bring those forth and live them every day not just on our thanksgiving day officially but live them every day living in a thanksgiving moment which i'll be talking about later on in my lesson I invite you to join with me in our opening affirmation, and this is from Wings of Prayer, and this is Daily Word. This is December the 9th, 1933. All things can be transformed through Christ's love. Just invite you now into a time of prayer, a time of reflection, self-reflection. As you breathe that truth in, the idea of divine love which is within us, this is a Christ love. This is the love that keeps the molecules and the atoms of this universe in our body cohesively held together. You could almost call it the spiritual glue because that's really what love is. It keeps us where we need to be. And as we allow that divine idea to really saturate our solar plexus, and we allow it to expand like the sun out of our body, out into our aura, and out into wherever you may be, may you know that you are one with the one. You are one with divine love. And all transformation truly is controlled by us. We are truly uh, a beings of transformation if we're willing to self-transform, which is really what metaphysics is all about. As good students of truth, we know there is only one presence and one power, God, the good, the omnipotent. There's really only one transformation, tra which means to transform. It means we reform who we are on an energetical, energetic level, and it comes forth in us and as us. And we become the radiant Christ beings we have come to be, and again, to live the life that we have come to live, we choose to live, because we're not victims. We truly are people of spirit, which means we get to choose how we want to show up, and we get to choose the experiences we want in our life, again, as good metaphysicians. And if you believe that high truth calling with me, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now here is Nita with our daily word. Good morning. The word for today is grace. And the affirmation is, grace blesses my life in every way. If I'm feeling overwhelmed or find myself in the midst of conflict, I don't need to struggle. Grace, the ceaseless activity of divine love, is mine to claim. This infinite source of spirit carries me through even the most challenging circumstances. It is expressing in my life right now. I need not earn grace. It is never withheld. Just as water flows when I turn the tap, saying yes to grace is all I have to do for di divine life, love, wisdom, and strength to flow freely to every part of my life. Centered in grace, I am at peace. My thinking is clear, and I possess ample understanding, compassion, and insight. Drawing from this divine gift, I bring harmony and joy to my relationships. I move forward with renewed confidence, energy, and efficiency. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. And the affirmation again is, Grace blesses my life in every way. Thank you, Nita, and thank you for reading uh, that daily word. And we like that word grace, because grace, again, is not something that you earn. It's something that is within us. It's innate within us. 
And really, when we realize we have grace, we really can show up differently in our own lives. Uh, right now, I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity. Silent Unity is a divine idea that was birthed by our co-founders of Unity, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore. And that idea was that there would, would always be somebody sitting in prayer, holding that sacred space 24-7. Started off in their home, went through the two different houses, one on McGee, and then it ended, first started at 913 Tracy. And now it's back at Unity Village in the Silent Unity Chapel. So by the power of truth, I'd like to acknowledge that sacred space of Silent Unity, this divine idea that someone is always, always holding the high watch. And any of the prayer re uh, requests that Unity receives, Silent Unity, to remember they're never, never, never left alone. They're always in the presence of truth, that light that shines for each and every one of us. I'd like to bless that worker that's sitting in that sacred space in that chapel, holding the high understanding of truth that we believe in answered prayer. I'd like to also bless those claims and every individu individual, however they got that claim to Unity Village and the Silent Unity Chapel, we affirm and know answered prayer and divine and perfect right action is happening in all their circumstances. We know that to be so. And by the power of truth, we call it omnipresence, the presence, the one presence of spirit or God or divine mind. I like to take some of that healing energy that rests in that sacred space. And I like to bring it to this sanctuary where I am this morning. And as I flood this room, and it goes through the walls and it goes out over our property and goes out to wherever you may be. May you just breathe in this idea of answered prayer. May you breathe in the truth that you deserve to have answered prayer and that you're filled with grace and love and wisdom and understanding, which really leads to really a wonderful way of being in a state of thanksgiving which we'll be talking about this morning. And we just want to use the mantra. I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, I have an interesting comic I pulled for you. And you, as you can see, it's a table setting. And there's six folks, a family looks like, maybe some aunts and uncles that are finishing a huge dinner. And they're all laughing and stuff is all over the table in a mess. It's a real messy table. And the caption for the comic reads, giving thanks that I don't have to clean up after all this. <laughs> because it's a huge mess. That's what it is. Hold it, hold it in your seats. I know you're laughing so much you're going to want to run to the bathroom, but you can't leave, can't leave until my talk's over, so you're just going to have to enjoy it. Just enjoy the laughter. Grin, grin, grin. I know this stuff is so, so good. Uh, from my minister's joke page, I have a little uh, Thanksgiving joke I want to share with you, and this is in the caption, or no caption, I'm going to read to you. It's, what did the mother turkey say to her disobedient children? It's a Thanksgiving joke. What do you think she said to her disobedient children? If only your father could see you now. He'd be turning over in his gravy. <laughs> turning over in his gravy. Oh, you know that is so fun. You know that is so good. You can share your milk duds. There's no problem. Share your milk duds. It's all good. We got to laugh. We got to grin. Got to grin. Got to grin. <laughs> Laughter is good for the soul. Another Thanksgiving joke. What did the turkey say to the computer? What did the turkey say to the computer? Google, 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 Google. I said Google, Google, not gobble, 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 gobble. That is so fun. Sit down, stay in your chairs. You can't stand up. Just sit where you are. It's all good. Keep the Cracker Jacks. Keep all the jelly beans there. Don't throw the peanuts or the popcorn on the floor because I have to end up picking it up. And I have one more joke from my minister's joke page since we're in the festive mood of Thanksgiving. If pilgrims traveled on the Mayflower, what do college students travel on? What do college students travel on? Pilgrims went on the Mayflower. You know what they do? They go on scholarships. Ha <laughs> ha, you know that is so good. I tell you, this humor, I tell you, it's hard for me to hold it in. It's hard for me to keep standing here. It is so good. We all need to laugh more. We don't laugh enough, and it's not that we don't take life. Very seriously, but I believe we need to take seriously 
uh, when we have times and breaks in our life uh, where we can laugh that no matter what we're going through, no matter what the diagnosis, no matter what the bills are, no matter what the, what the mail is stacked up, uh, whether on your email box or if it's on your uh, desk, let's just breathe into this moment and let's have some laughter. Let's bring us back to center, the Christ center within us. This is, we're gonna be celebrating Thanksgiving Sunday, today and we, we will be doing a metaphysical communion but the, my talk title this morning is um, a thanksgiving moment are you ready for a thanksgiving moment today right now and what i'm saying a thanksgiving moment is you you live in the present moment right now and you give thanks that you're in and you're living in this present moment we're not living in the past we're not living in the future. We're not worried about the past or the future. We're living in this Thanksgiving moment. And I believe Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving moment, this divine idea that I'm sharing with you, it's a state of awareness. It's a consciousness. It's not a geographical location or if you're just sitting at a kitchen table or if you're having a piece of pumpkin pie or minced meat pie. It's wherever you are, you're living in a thanksgiving moment. And when you do, I believe it helps us recenter who we are and how we can truly allow this to be a very special Thanksgiving Sunday. I want to say also that whenever we spend time on holidays, uh, sometimes it can be challenging because you maybe don't have your loved ones near you. I want to affirm with you that your loved ones, whether they've passed on the other side of the veil or not, or if your family can't get to you wherever you may be, you can be th there with them in this Thanksgiving moment. So I invite you to rediscover this idea of a Thanksgiving moment because it puts you in control of your feelings, of your emotions. It puts you in control, and you and I need to be in control if we're gonna be good metaphysicians. So maybe our family won't be with us for whatever reasons. We can still bless them, and we can still experience a wonderful Thanksgiving, a time of giving thanks for all the blessings that we have in our life. I want to share with you that when you have a Thanksgiving moment, we can realize we have the power to cope, to learn, and to grow. When we realize in a Thanksgiving moment that we are spirit, that we're the Christ, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, we have something to give thanks for. And that's really what a Thanksgiving moment is. It's a, it's a segment of time, a slice of time, again, where we can realize and we can realize that we can make it through any situation in our life. Again, we can cope, learn, and grow, which I think all of us really want to do as good, mature metaphysicians and Unity students. Thanksgiving is a positive holiday where we celebrate gratitude, some, uh, something we don't do enough these days. And I really believe that. We don't celebrate enough. We should celebrate more in giving thanks for what we have. It doesn't mean our life is perfect. It doesn't mean, the other thing too is when we celebrate these holidays, it doesn't mean that our country's perfect. I'm going to let you on a little secret. There is no perfect country. There is no perfect civilization. There's no perfect humanity anywhere. We are a conscious evolution. Consciousness is growing and expanding. We've come from caveman, cave woman to where we are today. And that doesn't mean we still don't have some wrinkles. That doesn't again mean that our country's perfect. That doesn't mean that we don't have places we need to change and we need to address. We take life very seriously. But that doesn't mean that we can't also still have a Thanksgiving moment to be thankful for the blessings that we have for the shoes that we're wearing, for the ability to brush our teeth. And people say, oh, Reverend Michael, that's no blessing. I pay for those. I don't care if you pay for them. Thank goodness that you have the ability to have electricity. Some places in the world, they don't have the option of electricity. Or it's, there, it's turned on and off at different times of the day or week. See, if we're, th if we're thankful in the little things, it changes our life. And we truly can experience a Thanksgiving moment, which is my prayer for each and every one of us. A little bit of history about Thanksgiving. Uh, it's the fall time harvest. All of the civilizations 
especially in the Western and even European, and I'm sure it's in South American hemispheres too, there's that time of harvest when people come together and celebrate what they have harvested off land or the vines or the trees. It's a celebration that we have started here with the pilgrims and when they arrived here, the pilgrims did uh, in the winter. And uh, the celebration began in uh, 1621 and they called it uh, the very first Thanksgiving. And again, I want to say just because I'm talking about Thanksgiving, that doesn't mean that all the history of Thanksgiving is perfect. Let's be grown up here. But there's still a time where we can be thankful for the blessings that we have. I'd like to share with you 10 facts about Thanksgiving that maybe you don't know about. The first one is the first Thanksgiving took place again in 1621. That's a few years ago. Number two, every Thanksgiving, the current president pardons uh, a turkey. The president pardons a turkey. So that's one good turkey that's uh, getting out of getting out of mischief there. Number three, Macy's has put on a parade every Thanksgiving since 1924. So we see that, uh, that parade that goes on in the streets of New York City since 1924. It's a long time. That's before television, and I'm sure it was broadcast through the uh, radio because that's all they had back then. Number four, Thanksgiving is the biggest travel day of the year. I bet you didn't know that. It's the biggest travel day of the year, and they say this year, 2022, that they plan on having that same number, if not more, especially since we're coming out of the COVID, the COVID times. Number five, the foods eaten uh, for Thanksgiving dinner haven't changed much since 1621, at least in the traditional sense. Now, if you have a tofurkey or something, you're, but it's supposed to be symbolically like a turkey. Number six, Americans eat over 280 million turkeys every Thanksgiving. It means there's a lot of turkeys out there on the table to chew from. Number seven, cranberries. Cranberries are native to North America. It's very interesting. We all love some good cranberry, cranberry sauce or gelled cranberries. Number eight, there is an official Thanksgiving postage stamp. Did you know that? Bet you didn't know that. Uh, number nine, the wishbone tradition is older than Thanksgiving. So it really didn't originate with Thanksgiving. It goes back into ancient cultures. But I know many of us have had the opportunity, hopefully, to hold on one of the wishbones and see whoever, whoever gets the uh, larger part or it doesn't snap off is supposed to bring you good luck. Uh, number 10, uh, watching football is an integral part of most Thanksgiving celebrations. And I had to put that in there, whether you like football or not, because it is a time where we eat and stuff ourselves some ways, and then we sit and watch the TV and we yell and scream at the people running around on the field. So it's part of our culture anyway. Different cultures do different things. In 1621, uh, in 1621, the uh, the Plymouth colony, colonists in the Wampaga in Native American Indians shared an autumn harvest feast that is acknowledged today as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations in the colonies. So I, um, again, we're just bringing a little bit of history in here. Uh, for more than two centuries, uh, Days of Thanksgiving were celebrated by the colonies in the early states in our early history in America. And again, I think not only because it happened with the pilgrims, but also because it's that time of harvest. It's when the leaves are changing, uh, they're getting the things out of the field because pretty soon the snow's going to come. So it's a time where they could be thankful for the blessings that they could see that grew, grew and they can also put away for the winter. It wasn't until 1863, uh, during the Civil War, that President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national Thanksgiving Day to be held each November. So actually, that's when the first Thanksgiving was really penciled into our history, is during the Civil War. I'd like to share some insight with you, and this is from a, a philosopher uh, and also a poet, and this is William Blake. The thankful receiver bears a plentiful harvest. How thankful are you? This Thanksgiving, in a Thanksgiving moment, we all have something to be thankful for. So I encourage you to be thankful for the little things and the big things. What would happen in my own life if Thanksgiving became the main thing, the main idea in my life? How would your life be different? How would my life be different? 
if we really lived in a, a Thanksgiving moment. And a Thanksgiving moment, again, is taking time in that moment to be grateful, to give thanks for what you have. That doesn't mean, again, your life is perfect. That doesn't mean you stop desiring the blessings in your life. It doesn't mean you stop praying. It doesn't mean you stop seeking your highest understanding of good in your life. But what it does is it puts in us in a vibration of healing and wholeness and our prosperity. That's what a thanksgiving moment can do for each and every one of us. We shouldn't allow people who hurt us to occupy a fraction of our heart. And what I'm meaning here is a lot of people will say, well, I can't have a thanksgiving moment and be happy because this happened, or that happened, or this is going to happen, or that might happen, or this happened to my parents, or this happened to my grandparents, this happened in the old country. Let's let that go. Let us decide that we ourselves can have our own Thanksgiving moment, regardless of what the past or the future may hold for us. And I'm not saying again that it's perfect or what they endured is good. I'm not saying that. But it doesn't and it should not rob us of having our own Thanksgiving moment, a moment of giving thanks for the blessings that we have and we continue to have. We need to forgive more and move on, especially in this season of our grand time of Thanksgiving. We need to find our Thanksgiving moment. I encourage you to find your moment of Thanksgiving. And it doesn't have to be when you're eating your meal. It could be something little. It could be just sitting watching, watching TV and that you have cable, that the, the, the show's coming in. Could be you're reading a really good book. Be thankful. You get to choose what you want to be thankful for in a Thanksgiving moment. This is from the New Testament. This is first, uh, excuse me, this is the Jewish scriptures. This is First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let's just breathe into that. If the spirit we understand is within us and as us, which we call God, if it, its love endures forever, we truly, truly have a, have a time of thanksgiving, or we surely should. We have something to be thankful for. You know, we don't have some God that's angry some time of the year or whatever, or lives on some kind of tangents or something. We have an understanding that God loves us. The God understanding that we have as Unity students is God loves us. And we have the ability to use that love and weave it into all of our life experiences, which means we really should be celebrating more Thanksgiving moments. Everyone should have a heart of thanksgiving as soon as they open their eyes. When you open your eyes in the morning, do you say, oh, thank, thank you, God. Thanksgiving, you're going to have a thanksgiving moment. Or do you open your eyes, oh, I got to get up, or whatever it may be. I encourage you, if you have that feeling, close your eyes again. Open your eyes again and have a thanksgiving moment. Because if you can start off your day from the time you're, you open your eyes, in a vibration of a thanksgiving moment. It truly sets the rest of your day. It really, really does. And it sets it that no matter what you have to go through, you're gonna survive it and you're gonna have fun and you're truly gonna make it a meaningful day. Another breath is the ability to open our eyes in the, again in the morning and it means that our biggest blessings are still to come. Think about that. Your biggest blessings are still to come. But I will say you, will really only experience those bigger blessings if you start having the practice of a Thanksgiving moment. And again, I'm not saying um, we're talking about it here because it's Thanksgiving in the fall season, but we can have a Thanksgiving moment in January, in March, in August, in September. Let's have a Thanksgiving moment to be thankful for what we have and we continue to grow and expand in the areas we want to experience in our life. This is from Henry David Thoreau. I am grateful for what I am and have. My thanksgiving is uh, perpetual. See, that's a thanksgiving moment. And that doesn't mean necessarily you have to register the words in your mind, thanksgiving moment, thanksgiving moment, thanksgiving moment, thanksgiving moment. What I'm saying is you, you need to be in the energy of the thanksgiving moment. It's like what's going on in the background. No matter what's going on, you know all is well because you've remembered that you're a divine soul and you deserve and your family deserves and everyone in your world and everyone in this world deserves the absolute best out of life. 
We need to count our blessings more. That means we need to count our blessings sometimes. When's the last time you did not a gratitude list, but a Thanksgiving list? Maybe that's something you could do after, after Thanksgiving this week. The more, again, our heart is parked in a place of Thanksgiving, we rejoice and there's less room for any whining and grumpiness. And I know nobody here is whiny and they don't, they're not grumpy anymore. Some days, you know, we have bad days. Some days our energy level isn't at the absolute highest peak. But going back to this idea of a Thanksgiving moment can help bring us back to center bring us back into alignment with the truth of, truth of our being. We, again, need to find our Thanksgiving moment. This is from uh, W. Clement Stone. If you are really thankful, what do you do? You share it. You share. Are you sharing your life? Are you sharing your gifts? I think it's something we all could do, and I think we could all do a little bit more. And when you share what you have, that doesn't mean you're telling people what to do. You're not judging their life. Well, this is what I would do. I mean, if they ask for your opinion, you can do it. But you want to encourage them wherever they are to share the goodness and love of Thanksgiving. Again, the world is not according to us. Everyone's unfolding according to their own soul understanding. Again, Thanksgiving is a time to give, a time to love, a time to reflect on the things life, the things in life that matter the most to you. What matters most to you? What matters most to you? Because I believe what, matter, what matters most to you is where you'll really anchor your Thanksgiving moment. Don't let autumn and its season of gratitude get lost in the blur of the Christmas fan fanfare. And I want to say that because if you go out shopping, they're already got the Santas already out. Everything is already green and red. You got Santas, elves are everywhere. Christmas is coming soon. But this week, this, this day, let's celebrate a Thanksgiving moment. Let's be in this holiday, this holiday. Let's not let it ease away or drip away or evaporate before our very eyes. Let's use this as a time to be thankful, to give thanks. We let Thanksgiving have its day because when we're thankful, it also gives us a healing vibration, which means we have a healing heart. And a healing heart is an open heart. A healing heart is a heart that listens. A healing heart is who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And again, I'd encourage you to find your Thanksgiving moment. This is from Trish uh, Regan. Thanksgiving for me is a time of reflection. And I believe as good students of truth, we always want to reflect. How are we showing up in life? How could we show up more authentically? How could we show up more loving? How can we show up more in a faith understanding, being thankful, giving thanks for where we are? And again, that doesn't mean our life is perfect. No, I've never said that. This world is in this this life we're in, it, we're here to grow and expand, which means we need to be in the moment. And I guarantee you, no matter what you're going through, if you found the energy of a Thanksgiving moment, you're gonna make it through. And you're gonna realize your divinity will carry you through no matter what obstacles lay before you. We need to be grateful for what we have. We need not only be grateful, but we need to be grateful again in January, in March, in February. We need to be more grateful souls. And I think we can all practice that. Thanksgiving Day uh, is a time to recommit our souls and our soul energies to giving thanks. See, most of us don't give thanks. What we do is we give negative thoughts. We give negative opinions. We give a griping and complaining a place in our consciousness. I'm encouraging us that if we're in a tough situation or a place where our sock is in a knot, let's breathe and see if we can use the energies of a Thanksgiving moment to help us to uh, kind of iron out whatever that crease may be or get that knot out of our life so we can move on. So we are not victims of a past. We're not victims of sadness. We're not victims of negativity. We're not victims of the news. We're not victims of current events. What we are is we are truly the Christ and we have a right to be happy. We have a right to be satisfied. We have a right to have a Thanksgiving moment regardless of what is going on in the world around us. And I'd like to share you a little story about Thanksgiving. And this is uh, William C. Noren's story, and they uh, live in New Jersey. When the time uh, came to serve Thanksgiving dinner, uh, I mashed the potatoes and spooned them into a beautiful serving bowl. 
that belonged to his mother. I turned away to get a carving knife for the turkey. And when I glanced back at the bowl of the mashed potatoes, I was horrified. I saw Pepper, our cat, had decided it was the right place for him to take a nap. Can you believe this? Speechlessly, I, I tugged at my wife's blouse and, 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 and nodded toward the bowl. My wife looked in her eyes wide and as big as, uh, big as saucers. We, we couldn't compose ourselves. We, so what we did is we went over there and they, we shooed Pepper out of the mashed potato bowl. Hey, Pepper knows where it's warm. The Pepper, they don't, don't ever say animals aren't smart. Uh, so we whooshed Pepper out of the bowl of our mashed potatoes. And of course, we scraped off the top layer of potatoes. You know, we don't want any hairballs in our potatoes. And they went on with their Thanksgiving dinner. And what I love about that story is the innocence. The innocence. You know, the cat, Pepper the cat, it didn't do that to screw up their Thanksgiving dinner. It was looking for a place to have a little cozy little nap. And I think the story there, because all stories can be looked at metaphysically, wherever we are, see that cat lives in the now moment. See, animals live in the now moment. And they're always thankful. They're always going back to that thankfulness, which is really a question that we could self-reflect on our own life. Are we really thankful for the circumstances in our life? So when life gives you potatoes, are you willing to make some mashed potatoes and sleep in them? It's a metaphysical thought. This is the time in our service where we are going to be celebrating a metaphysical a communion. We will be celebrating a uh, unity style metaphysical communion uh, without the elements, we will doing, be doing it spiritually, meaning that we take the affirmations and we'll be holding them in our, our heart space and allow them to really nourish our soul and help us to remember how thankful we really are. I'd like to give a little bit of context for this. Uh, through Unity, uh, they have services where it was a spiritual communion or you could have communion with the elements. One is not better than the other. One is not more righteous than the other. It's where you are. Because whether you have the elements or you're doing a spiritual communion, it really comes down to the consciousness. When you hear the phrases about the bread and the wine, how is it showing up within you? And that's really what it's all about. Now, uh, the scene for this is, of course, uh, Jesus, we call it the Last Supper in the New Testament. But historically, it's really Passover. It's the sacred celebrating when the Jewish people left the land of slavery and they went over on their journey into the wilderness. So I'd like to uh, speak to you, and this is from the Gospel of Matthew, and this is Matthew 26, and it's verse 26 through 29. And we consider this the instant institution in Christianity of this Lord's Supper, this time of Thanksgiving. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it uh, to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. When he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And what we know is that what he's talking about is the life force. It's not, we're not uh, cannibals. We're not drinking human blood. It's symbolic of the life force within us. And that's really what the Passover really is a forerunner of this, this idea of communion. So I'd invite you to enter a time of stillness within you. And I'm going to be uh, reading the affirmation. The first one is going to be uh, for the bread. And the second one is for the wine. And as I read these affirmations, I encourage you to think about the metaphysical understanding of these elements. Where are you nourished? Where are you spiritually fed? Because this is a time where we're really being refed with our spiritual truth. Because remember, as students of truth, there's only one presence and one power. You see, at the atomic level, there's only atoms and molecules in this dimension. So it's what we give to the words. It's how we interpret the words that make them special to us, especially on this Thanksgiving day. So I will say, as I give you the bread metaphysically, Take this bread in remembrance of the divine substance of God. Let's just take that, let's take a moment and take that into our own consciousness.
And now I'd like to symbolically, metaphysically share with you the wine. And the affirmation is, take this wine in remembrance of the divine life of God. And again, let's just take that idea deep within our own consciousness now. And as we allow these divine ideas to filter through our mind, our body, and our soul, let us know that really every meal symbolically is a communion table. Whenever we are being filled or, or nourishing our body temple, it doesn't have to be bread and wine. It could be grapefruit juice and sorry sticks. It's God's substance. It's the energy we give ourselves. It's taking in this understanding that spiritually, we are divine and that everything in this world is divine because it's made of that divine substance. So as we go through this communion time and this idea of a common union, which is really what communion means, let us accept the oneness within our own souls. Let us know truly that we truly live in the divine substance of spirit. May we know that we are never spiritually hungry. We shouldn't be because we know the substance of God fills us up to overflowing. And we also know that this wine symbolically represents really the divine life of life within us. There is a divine life force and energy within us that bubbles up within our souls. May this be the, the Sunday or whenever you watch this service and you celebrate this metaphysical, metaphysical communion. May you have the idea that you're communing with your own higher self. This communion table metaphysically is spread not for somebody else out there, but for you. And if we truly do this in the high understanding of our divine nature and the God presence within us, we truly can celebrate. We can celebrate and be satisfied in a Thanksgiving moment. And we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now this is from the Jewish scriptures. This is the great book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 18, verse 20. From the fruit of their mouths, people's stomachs are filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. Let us allow that, that wisdom to really soak within us. Let's relish in that truth and let it nourish us. So we become nourished. That's what communion really is all about. That's really what the Passover is all about. Really, it's about us relishing and remembering that we're divine and that everything we do is God's substance. And we take it into our bodies, our minds and our souls, and it allows us to grow and expand and truly be in the God presence and as a God presence within each and every one of us. It's a wonderful opportunity to get warm and have fuzzy feelings. Being around a wood stove or a hearth could be out going on a walk and looking, all, looking at the leaves that are changing their dress. Or being with loved ones could be with your animals. Find that Thanksgiving moment and relish it. I would like to share with you some wisdom. and This is from Melanie White. And some of you maybe can relate to this. Thanksgiving is a time to count your blessings one by one as each relative goes home. Oh, I know what you think. You know, sometimes I understand family dynamics is not always perfect. It's not always like the Waltons. But whatever it may be, you can allow people to be where they are and accept them where they are in their journey. And maybe they don't have an understanding like you on certain things. So what? You can still have a Thanksgiving moment. You allow them to be where they're going to be. But then you also allow yourself to be where you want to be. That's truly the hallmark of a Thanksgiving moment. It's a time to really remember and speak to our own soul selves. What makes us happy? And again, we're not talking about in a narcissistic way. What allows us to be in the present moment, a Thanksgiving moment, to give thanks to give thanks, even if you spill the coffee, even if you dribble some gravy or cranberries on your shirt or blouse. Life goes on. Let's take a breath. Let's take a breath. Just like that story with the cat taking a little nap in the mashed potatoes. You don't chuck all the potatoes out. You just take off the first layer and you go on with life. And I guarantee you, those mashed potatoes probably taste better than any other mashed potatoes that were ever made. You know why? Because there was a story behind it. And it's a Thanksgiving story. 
And that's what we love. That's what we cherish. That's what we need to hold on during the season of Thanksgiving. And this is from Robert Schuler. There is only one way to treat any human being. First class. And what Reverend Schuler is telling us really also is that if we treat all human beings as first class souls, we need to be treating ourselves that way too. Remember in metaphysics, you can't give something that you don't have. If you're not at the vibration, you can't give it. You have to be at the vibration to give it. So let's really take in this idea in a Thanksgiving moment to treat all people, to treat all aspects of our life as first class. We deserve the best. And may this be the Thanksgiving we claim it. We make it our own, allow it to be a part of us. That's what a Thanksgiving moment is all about. One of the things I'd like to share with you is that Thanksgiving can be an emotional time. People travel thousands of miles to be with people they see only once a year. And then very often discover once a year is often enough. And I only put that in there because I know family dynamics can be just a treat. Let me tell you, just a real, real treat. But whatever the situation is, I'd encourage you to allow people to be who they're going to be. This doesn't mean we're all going to agree. You know, we play Uno, not everyone's going to win. But I will say, be in the moment. Support the people that you love. Again, whether they think 100% like you or only 1% like you or they don't think anything like you. That has nothing to do with living in the presence of God or spirit and living in this Thanksgiving moment of gratitude. And this is from uh, the Jewish scriptures. This is Psalms 67, verse 6. The earth has yielded its produce. God our God blesses us. Let's take this divine idea, the idea in. God is constantly blessing us, continues to bless us. And I will say when you live in a Thanksgiving moment, you see these blessings in every possible way and fashion showing up in your life. The idea that you have mail delivered to your house. The idea that you have the ability to go to the store and buy cranberries in a can. You have the ability to peel the potatoes and make your own mashed potatoes. Everything be thankful for. That's how you change your life. That's how you have a Thanksgiving moment that lasts not just one day, but 365 days a year. Life truly has delivered to us a life that we need to relish, that we need to desire more Thanksgiving moments in it. So this, this Thanksgiving, let's set the intention not only to bless the meal and bless our time together with our family or non-family or, or whatever you choose to do that's sacred and special for you. Bless it and give thanks that this is what you want to do. Maybe next year you'll do something else. Again, I think sometimes we're too rigid in our thinking. Blessings are not uh, really piled up by being rigid. Blessings are living in that thanksgiving moment, giving thanks for everything, giving thanks for everything, especially a consciousness of thanksgiving. I hope and pray that each of you will open your eyes and hearts to see the rich blessings all around you. We all have blessings that we need to acknowledge. We really do. The small ones and the big ones. The big ones and the small ones. Let's list those. Instead of making a gratitude list, let's do a Thanksgiving list. How many things can you put on that list? Very, I mean, it might be something that really stirs within you. And again, when you do a list, it's like journaling. It draws something out of your own soul. And in closing, I would like to share with you the idea that encourage you to find your Thanksgiving moment this year and relish in its essence. May this be the Thanksgiving that changes your life. May this be the Thanksgiving that you really awaken to the dynamic power of God consciousness, which is actually living in a Thanksgiving moment. And we just say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is our time in our service. We have the opportunity to share love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and imbue it with your soul's essence and energy of thanksgiving, a thanksgiving moment. We know it goes forth through this ministry and blesses us, allows us to be here, and we give thanks. Also goes as we bless the unity movement. We also 
adhere to the truth that when we tithe or we give our love offerings or our gifts, we tap into that thanksgiving energy within us, which means it's the law of circulation, which is another way of saying or having a thanksgiving moment because you're in that circulation of blessings and blessings and blessings. If you join me, join with me in our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that we give and all that we receive. And in a thanksgiving moment, we say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And you can go to unityway.com and get our physical address. And you also go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. However you give, may this be the Sunday you truly give it in a thanksgiving moment. And again, we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now this is our prayer of protection. I'd like to dedicate this to all of our souls, all the things that we're going to be doing this week, really not only just for Thanksgiving, for safe traveling or whatever we may be embarking on during this Thanksgiving time, but let's use this truly as maybe a new way of stepping into as we go into the holiday season, as we go into a time of rebirth within us, that we truly can remember that we're protected. We're always protected when we acknowledge the one presence and the one power. We always are protected when we know that we are thankful for this high revelation within our souls. If you'd please join me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Well, I know where God and spirit is. It's in a thanksgiving moment. May this truly be a service. May this be a week. May this be a celebration exactly what your soul individually needs. And may you again have a communion Sunday. Doesn't have to be just on this particular day. Whenever we take in God's substance and God's life, we truly have a communion within us. It's a common union, truly. It's a common understanding spiritually and metaphysically that we are the Christ. Again, we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And knowing that truth and believing in that truth, we truly can live in a Thanksgiving moment. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week.